All right, fantastic to see this group. Does anybody know anything about the history of Crop of God? See it on the website or anything? Well, whether you did or not, I'm going to say the same few things. Uh, our founder we, we look at as being Eni Lichtenfeld. He was a stud in his day. He was an all-European wrestler, an all-European boxer, an all-European gymnast. His dad was a very famous police chief that was known for going and getting the worst hardened criminals that nobody else wanted to go after. So they were kind of, even in his youth, developing self-defense techniques. Uh, he was also a Jew on the wrong side of the track right before World War II. Uh, legendary guy, a lot of fights. Sounds like him and a few friends protected their neighborhood from gangs of Nazi youth. Um, always outnumbered. It seems like uh, he was a very analytical, very smart guy. He would figure out after these fights, you know, what if there had been a few more of them? Uh, what if they'd have had broken bottles? Uh, he found out in a hurry things like his wrestling did him no good in that circumstance. You cannot be on the ground with one guy if he's got three friends with him, uh, kicking you in the head. These, these were things he figured out by doing them. Uh, he got out of Czechoslovakia before the war, which is a good thing. That's probably why he was around later to do the things he did. In 48, when Israel became a nation, they thought so highly of him, they put him in charge of their entire military's hand-to-hand -hand techniques. Um, people always say, oh, man, military, hand-to-hand, -hand, uh, that truly translates fantastic to us today because he had men and women. He had everybody in the country ages 18 to 55. Uh, he only had them for six weeks. So whatever he taught them could not rely on brute strength because he had a lot of small females. Could not rely on athletic ability. He had couch potatoes that had never done anything in their lives. Um, had to be easy to learn, easy to remember, because he only had them for that short period of time. All this translates well to us. And the thing that translates the best is probably how effective it is. If you know anything about Israel, uh, they're in fights all the time. This stuff uh, changes. It's not, hey, he developed it, let's bow down to the Grand Master. They want to stay alive, they want to remain a country. So they're constantly uh, tweaking things, just like we do with the USKMA. We're tweaking things to make them as effective and as easy uh, as they possibly can be. Now we do a lot of what we do in class, how you're standing now, we call it a neutral stance. In class, we can, truly this is usually a neutral stance, feet beside each other, hands down. But we can do things anyway, hands in the pockets, legs crossed. Our thought is if this threat suddenly appears swinging at us, we can't have a system to work, we have to get into a, a, a stance and how we can react. We've got to learn to do things however we're standing and worry about the stance later. Uh, now after saying that, we do have a stance we're going to get into. If somebody's a threat, if somebody's around us that we don't feel comfortable with, we've got a certain stance. Do I have any lefties? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's a lefty, I don't trust you on that. <laughs> Whenever I say step right, you step left. You put the other hand and you know that. Okay, from here everybody, take a step with your left foot just like you're walking. Boom, that's where we want our feet, like a walk, walking stance. Any deeper or bladed, I don't have balance. Any closer, I don't have balance. Any deeper, I'm too slow. Um, God knew what I was doing. That's perfect for speed and balance, our walking step. Now, we're going to put our hands out in front of us. Not quite locked elbows, but you're looking at whoever you're looking at through the circle you just made. Cool thing with this is it looks like I'm trying to calm things down. It doesn't look like I know what I'm doing. For instance, if somebody had a knife, I don't want to be standing there going, whoa, whoa. Now they think, hey, he thinks he knows something. I'm going to faint, I'm going to circle. This just looks like, hey, hey. We would truly run in that instance. I mean, truly, I teach people friggin' run. That's the best night defense I've got. But if someone is going to come in, I would much rather just be a big, ah, rather than they're starting to faint and move with me. So, boom. Common situation then. It's also good that everybody's got those darn cell phone cameras. You're always going to have that show in court, so hey, and I just square up with it. But way cool about this is it's defensive. I mean, anything that comes through the middle, boom, I've got blocks. Outside, I've got blocks. I'm squared up to hit hard when I have to hit hard. I use all four appendages here. We are going to start something that may not make sense at first, but I'll explain what we're doing here in a second. Take your back hand and slam the door. Boom. It's heavy. You're mad. Come on, Mary, guys. You know how to do this. Turn. <laughs> Slamming that door, I don't do silly things. I don't bend at the waist. I don't drop my hand all the way back. Make a fist and do that same motion. It's a heavy door and you're mad. Now we're punching. Punching. We're putting all of our body weight behind this. Front hand. Slam that door. You gotta use your hip. It's heavy. Make a fist. Do the same thing. Way cool. Um, we're gonna give hits on it and hit here in a minute. But our thought is we need to put our body weight behind anything that we throw. If he's a bad guy, I'm punching with just my arms. I don't know what our arm weight is, 20 pounds. This is what pisses him off. It's not being effective. If I put my 210 behind it, now maybe I can defend myself. Punching with a throw with 210, that's going to be a little bit different. 
first principle of Krog, if somebody needs hit, they need hit as hard as you possibly can. If somebody needs hit, that means they were a threat. We need to make a pest dispenser out of them. Rip their head off backwards. We need to hit as hard as we can. Grab a partner, one of you put focus mitts on. Quickly. As an aside, if you move this slow my instructor training, we are going to have problems. <laughs> For the camera, generally, I'll have a couple of, of assistants and we'll hold the mitts. We'll hold for this guy two or three punches, this guy two or three. If you got a big group, you're by yourself, um, you got to have them split up like this. you got to have them hold mitts. And then you got to explain how to hold them and all that good stuff. If you got a mitt on, your back's to the wall. We're just holding for the right. Watch here. Again, I'm not just arm. I need to turn my hip. You're going to hit as hard as you can. Turn. Chin down, bring it right back to your face. Don't show your head. Let me see. Mid holders, you're going to pop their hand. Don't just be loose, you'll hurt your elbow. Pop their hand when they hit. Bring this in. 
I'm not coming across. If I come across, I'll knock some of his teeth out and just piss him off. I want to go through. I want to see my elbow coming out the back of his skull. We are. <laughs> I'm not stopping and giving him a bloody nose. I'm going through and making a Pez dispenser out of him. Come here. Come here. Give it a go. Let me see what you got. First more. Go through. Go through. We, we're staying in fighting stance. Very good. Strike, I'm buried. The fist is coming. 
Uh, give it a go. Put it right on the spine, 45 degree angle. Inside it, you gotta see where to aim. And you also gotta make sure it's not mom telling you dinner's ready. You gotta see that it's a threat. So look at him, look at him. This. This. Hand him over. Other side. Looking good. On your own. Hey, get lower. We'll just keep rolling. This is awesome. Front kick. Crowd's all about kicking people in the groin. This is effective. No matter how big the muscle that is, you can't build this groin up. That's where we're kicking. There, xiphoid throat. Again, in class, we want you to hit the targets. That's what we're aiming at in class. I don't want to send people to the hospital. In reality, if I'm elbowing or whatever again into the chest, it's not doing anything. He'll be bruised tomorrow, but he may whoop me now. It's soft part of the face, including the throat, that's below the eyebrows. It's side point right where the roots come together, and it's growing, 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 growing. On our front kick, it's not like a martial art front kick. It's more like punting a football. Uh, if they're choking me, for instance, they're not choking me like this. They are in, face down. That's what we call an A-frame. I don't have to have much of an aim. If my front kick goes anywhere in here, it leads itself to the groin. When I learned uh, martial arts, when we learned to kick, it was with a very specific part of the foot. Not so here, I'm hitting him in the groin. If I hit him with my big toe, I'm happy. If I hit him with my knee, I'm happy. Anywhere in between, I'm ecstatic. I just want to kick him in the groin. He is going to hold this by, getting it way out from him and bending his elbows. If you're here, you're going to rip your shoulders up. I want to absorb here. And it's out from his groin, very good. In my stance, again, I'm not going to cock it back, I'm just going to send it. The only big rule is to get the knee above the target. Don't stop it down here. I've got this little bend in it, I just keep that. I straighten it at the last second. Not a lot to it. I'm going to let the, the first person that kicks, the first side, you're going to kick twice, and I'm going to stop you and change a few things. <laughs> Give it a go. Kick twice for me, and then i got a few things to yap about. And time. When you do intros, everybody will do these two things wrong. Except for this group. You guys are ones people, you know what they're doing. I saw automatically I saw him say, hey, come here. What'd I tell you? We want to go forward. I can't kick and put my foot back behind me. Now I gotta go in again. If I kick and put my foot down, I'm going in. So that's what I want to see. The other thing is, and again, you guys all did this very well. Um, keep your hands up. Again, it's a tie if I kick him and he smacks me in the face. I don't want to tie. These hands stay here. My Muay Thai people, they want to argue, maybe that will give you five percent more power. Is that worth taking one in the face? In a Muay Thai match, the ref will stop the guy from stomping on your head. Not so in the street. My hands are up here. <laughs> they don't drop. Give me two more kicks. Sweet. Hand it over. Same thing on this side. Front kick. Back foot. Lay forward. Here. 
If the knee is open, I'll throw it. If it's not, I've got other things I can do from out here. Look at the distance now. It's going to pick up some momentum. And the angle is coming up. This will be the point of my knee. <laughs> we are almost as if our upper body were to lay back on the floor. We blast our hips. Every combatant we throw, it, it's hips, it's core. Blast our hips. <laughs> when I make contact, if I'm upright or bent forward, there were no hips, there's no power. I've got to be here when I make contact. <laughs> Target over, up against your body, and lean forward. Let me see some knees in the fight. Choke me, and I was watching him. We're in a fight. I don't want choked. This is dangerous. 
your train will crush like a pop can, and you're in trouble when it does. The reason we do this pluck, we call it a pluck, is because if there's pain here, my hands are going there. I don't even know I'm being choked yet, yet my hands are going there. If a mosquito bites your leg, you oh, it was a mosquito. You don't look at it for a minute and then, oh, our hands go where the pain is. Crop was developed with natural body reactions. Uh, natural reaction is always, always quicker than a lymph motion. It's just the way it is. Again, I don't even know this is happening. My hands are going there. Now, what we do is we take natural body reactions and mix them with um, aggression. It would be natural grab. The stronger person wins that. We can't just grab. I'm making hooks. I'm using my lat muscles. I'm going for the base of the thumbs and ready. Get rid of the danger is the first principle. Get rid of the danger. Your trouble with that crushes. Get rid of the danger. That's paramount. Nothing else matters if he crushes this. Hooks, lat muscles. He's bigger and stronger than me, but he's not resisting out. If I hitch or go slow or just grab, he'll resist out. I'm plucking explosively. I've moved him that way before he even knows what's going on. Second principle is simultaneous counterattack. That's my defense, but now what? He draws a knife. He's better than me. Same time. Boom! Again, he's not standing like this to choke me. It's there. Take it. The other cool thing with that is he can be a gorilla, and I can barely maybe move his fingers, but I guarantee with that, I've loosened it up a bit better. Get rid of the danger, simultaneous counterattack. The third one is, finish him. Boom, land on the elbow, grab him to the throat, to the groin, to the throat, head, boom, and we're out of there. Uh, we'll do that today in class. That was just a demo. Your your is pretty much over. Um, make sure you get a drink, about 10 minutes to class starts. Uh, I'll, if you didn't come with somebody, I'll find a partner for you. Put you with somebody that's uh, that's going to walk you through this stuff since this is your first class. Uh, and then after the class, you're going to talk to the front desk person and then show you how to continue this fun stuff and all the other things we do. Any questions? Then I would go around shaking everybody's hand and then we'd have class in about 10 minutes. So get a drink and we'll talk about what we just did.